<gasps> Gentlemen, is night vision dead or is it still very much alive? It's definitely very much alive. Night vision still has a huge place in the market. Um, a mix of thermal spotter and night vision rifle scope is most definitely one of the most popular combinations that we see. Okay, so as far as the um, the benefits of night vision over thermal, then if we go down that route then, Paul? During the day, all these night vision devices here you can use in daytime and colour, so you can use it in colour daytime, so a bit better for identification of quarry species in daytime. Um, thermal, if you're using thermal in daytime, quite often the ground gives a bit of a thermal bloom, so you lose a bit, lose a bit more definition. You can still use thermal in the daytime, but these new day night vision rifle scopes allow you 24-7. Um, some people say identification of, through, of species through night vision at night is a bit better than thermal. It used to be, with modern thermal devices it's not. Um, modern thermal devices like the Thermine Pro, you can ID at ranges you wouldn't even consider shooting at. So that things have moved on a bit since then, but it definitely has its place in the market. And what about yourself, Tim? Are you a night vision fan? Uh, yeah, I've, I've not long been on uh, full thermal scopes. Uh, again, used to be on the night vision with ATN. Again, as Paul said there, it's, it's good to identify quarry with uh, IR. And again, once you experience builds and you know the shape and the movement of the animal, it's easy to move to, move to thermal and move away from IR. But I still don't think it will never take a back seat. There'll always be a place for IR as opposed to thermal. Every every situation has got its own tool for the job, which, whether that be IR or thermal. And cost as well, obviously. Mm. Night vision is considerably cheaper. You can buy something like the Wraith HD here for £450. That all you'll shoot foxes at 200 metres with with a decent IR on there. You know, thermal is a long, long way for that performance at that price point. You know, you're, you're talking £2,500 for a thermal to give you the same capability. So price is a major function, particularly when it comes to choosing a, a rifle scope. And we were talking about night sight just a few minutes ago, Paul, and uh, you used to sell a lot of those units. Are we still seeing the progression in in technology, are you still seeing investment in that? Um, in terms of an add-on, there are some brands that still do add-ons. Night Sight very much had its day in terms of the, the performance it gives, but you know, having something with an HD sensor inside and an HD display that you can see crisp clear. You know, some of these, particularly the Digex C50 from Pulsar, you will be hard pushed to say you would ever need a day scope again. That can provide perfectly crystal clear clarity in daytime. It's never going to be quite as good as a German glass in terms of definition or clarity, but it's more than capable for daytime shooting. I've shot targets with my lad with that, shooting targets completely fine during the day, perfect detail with it. Are you finding people are doing that? They're using this as a, yeah, both a day and night unit then? That is something that people are deciding upon and making that sort of decision when they're comparing, you know, they're not going for the, the orthodox glass. Very, very much so, particularly if they you tend to find if you have a, a deer stalker, for example, who has a really good quality German optic, they would quite like to buy an add-on, they could add for it, but now with these, you can buy a quick release Picatinny mount, you can take off your Zeiss or Leica day scope and you can put that on at night, so it's becoming more and more popular and a lot of people only have one rifle and only want to have one optic, so you can now use that for both, instead of having to invest in a day scope and then have to worry about taking it off and re-zeroing it when you put your night scope on, set a profile on this for your 1.7, your 243, your 308 and you can swap them back and forward and no need to re-zero. And what about limitations of illumination then? We know you've got the uh, very powerful looking torch there on the left hand side of frame. Just explain what people need with these scopes. So all these scopes come with an IR illuminator included as standard. Um, Pulsar's one's pretty good as a standard IR illuminator because these new devices, particularly the infrared tube and the Digex are a lot more sensitive. You don't need massive amounts of IR for kind of normal ranges. Um, Standard IRs that come with them, they're, they're obviously included as part of the package price. Upgrading to something, maybe not always as big as this. This is the Wicked Light Shot Pro, but we do a 51, an A51 IR, an A67 IR, and this one, the Shot Pro. These will give you amazing detail. Mark Ripley saying this on something like the 450 pounds Wraith HD, 300 meters identification of a fox with this. It's given amazing performance for not a lot of money. Something like this will cost you 270 pounds with your Wraith and you're getting that kind of performance. Okay, the Digex is you know, 1,100 pounds and you're getting a decent IR with it as standard. You can upgrade your IR on any of these units to something like the Wicked Light or the PBIR that they sell and you'll get great performance from them. Also, I was also surprised, I picked that torch up just before. It's actually quite light, isn't it? Yep, they are, yep, they don't weigh much at all. So it's got a red, a red LED in here. You can also pop in uh, an infrared LED in this tremendously big heat sink. We also do the wicked lights where you can actually change the diode. So you, you turn a dial and it switches to which dial you need. But in terms of ultimate performance, these are the business. 600 meters, they claim an identification range with a quality night vision scope.
I'm using that 67i with the tube at the moment, and this the, the image clarity is, is second to none. But again, as, as Paul mentioned there with the PBIR, the L is a laser, and again, where it's, where some of these units now are so sensitive, it can be a bit too much for it with a laser one. So finding the right IR is is quite a niche. And again, with the tube, you can adjust the exposure with inside it to bring that perfect sight picture down to give you a really crisp, clear image. With the Digex, you can buy the Digex with or without an IR illuminator. And most people buy like this, they'll buy it and they'll, they'll chuck their IR illuminator in the bin and never bother using it. But the IR actually comes with this in a package is well suited to it. So buying this straight away, you don't need to buy another IR with it. It'll be perfectly fine for normal ranges. But if you want to get the best from it and have different things like spot to flood adjustability and focus and um, the power adjustment as well, buying an additional IR does have its benefits because it'll also give you better clarity. You'll notice some of the better quality IRs are much cleaner and much sharper, particularly at longer distances. Okay, so as, you know, not not all IRs are the same then. No, not all IRs are the same at all. There's there's a lot of cheaper IRs in the market. Um, I think Wicked Light and PBIR are probably the two best ones and most popular ones, I would say, you see people using mostly. Um, Wicked Lights we sell lots and lots of because they're affordable, but they come with everything you need. So you get a box with your mount, your batteries, everything all inside there. And it's a cheap way of upgrading performance. You buy a Wraith and it'll come out the box straight away. Just chuck some AA batteries in, you get your IR with it. But you know, down the line, you think oh, I really want to stretch its legs a bit. You'd have to go and invest in another scope initially. You could go and buy a better quality IR for it. With the Digex, maybe not so much because it's so sensitive already. The IR will make a difference, but you don't want to overexpose it. So you want to be able to make sure you can adjust the power and make sure something shooting rats at short distance doesn't need a lot of IR at all. A Fox at 250 meters, you'll, you'll want to crank the IR up a bit. Okay, final thought. Just just give you some prices here, Paul, just off the top of your head. Okay, so you've got Wraith HD, £450. Um, Infrared Tube TD50, £899. Um, Sightmark Wraith uh, 4K, which is the new 4K sensor inside, this is £800. Digex, £1,000 or £1,239 if you're buying it with the IR. Okay, could those all do foxes as well as rats? Absolutely, yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're all perfectly capable. 150 metres to 200 metres, perfectly capable. And daytime as well? Yep, yep, completely. We was out to 300 uh, yards with a 223 on that in the daytime, shooting an 8-inch plate, no, no problems whatsoever. <gasps>